Hey guys, what is uppity up today? I thought I would do a girl talk video and since a lot of you have been requesting for me to do a closet tour, I will be doing that today as well. I know that I don't really do these type of like talking vlogging videos that are not very haul or style or fashion focused, but I feel like in those type of videos, I don't actually get to know you guys on like a personal level. And plus, looking back, I only have like two or three girl talk videos like ever, which is ridiculous. So today I'm just going to be taking you guys on a tour of my closet, a really quick one because it's messy AF. <laughs> and also answering some of your questions. Let's go. Okay, so first up, this is my bedroom. Oh my God, I'm already on a tangent. I'm supposed to take you guys on the closet, not my bedroom. But basically, this is my closet which is situated in my bedroom. Um, some of you might recognize this from my Insta stories because I do go in here quite a bit and it is really super duper messy right now. So do not judge. I haven't cleaned up or anything in like the past, I wanna say year. <laughs> So it is kind of like a semi walk-in closet, but only like halfway because over here you have like the wall. Um, down here I have a bench, you know, in case I get tired of looking at my clothes. <laughs> okay, let me start over here. So at the top here, I don't actually know what that is because it's so high up for me. Um, I'm 5'7 and even I can't reach that sometimes. It's hard for me to see. I don't know what that is. It's just like random pieces right now. Here are all my pants. So <laughs> yeah also really jumbled and here are all my skirts as you can see it's like pretty much overflowing the amount of skirts i have it's really quite something and then over here's my underwear i'm not gonna pull it open because it's completely just messy here's my bras here are my socks it's even labeled and here i my pjs i didn't want to clean up beforehand because i wanted to give you guys a real representation of what my closet looks like on a day-to-day -day basis because let's be real we have all seen perfect closets on other youtubers channels i feel like you guys don't need to see another perfect closet over here is my very messy top so i have all my short sleeve my body suits here my tank tops my spaghetti straps and over here i have my t-shirt over here i don't know why i have some random denim pieces here but on the bottom i have also random there's a jacket here and these are usually just clothes that i just got in and over here are all the pieces that i got recently so these are the clothes that you'll be seeing um, me try on in my trial hauls or in my look box and then over here i have all my shorts so these are all my denim shorts and really messy these are my sports kind of like yoga pants yoga shorts sport crop tops um over here i have my jeans and on top i have my sweatpants over here i have my scarves and stuff over here i have it's labeled tight dresses and blazers it's not very true to the label right now because obviously i haven't touched it in such a long time it's summer now so i kind of left that go kind of crazy over here i have my dresses and my longish like more maxi type dresses and over here i have my hoodies and my jackets and over here i have my hair okay i realize how this looks this completely looks like like <laughs> serial killer's closet right now why do i have human hair in my closet in case you guys don't know i wear hair extensions on all of my videos so these are the ones that i use this is the ponytail version i actually have a tutorial on my channel if you guys want to see me put this ponytail on my head and then these are the clip-ins so now i am currently in my filming room or my studio some of you guys might recognize this space because i film all of my lookbooks here and all of my trial hauls here as well so today i have prepared here a bunch of celebrity inspired pieces if you haven't seen that yet go on my channel by the time this vlog goes live the celebrity video will already have gone live so yeah make sure you check it out and over here i have another closet so these are all my shoes and these are pretty much what I would wear during my lookbooks. Over here, I have some more shoes as well. Some of you might recognize these pieces. And over here, I have a bunch of drawers. They're kind of labeled. So these are all the pieces that I put into my closet. And these are pretty much mislabeled at the moment. These are not green in the closet. These are just my belts and my bags more bags 
<laughs> even more bags <laughs> um, and then over here oh my god what is this ah! over here I have some more dresses and pieces for filming and over here I have my hats and all of my purses over here because one only needs about 100 purses right you know what might as well give you guys a tour of my office since we're already in here this is where I work this is the computer I use to edit all of my videos this is the artwork I have here always dress like it's the best day of your life mm, I don't know how accurate that is today <laughs> <laughs> And I got a new plant! Okay, I never actually have any like plants in my house. I have like those like Ikea plants that are like a dollar each, like these ones. I got this plant because I'm feeling like plant mommy. And you know, during quarantine, you need to dress up for somebody and I need to impress my plants. Okay guys, be honest. Let me know in the comments down below whether or not your closet is as messy as my closet i mean this is like pretty much best case scenario where like all of my clothes are hung up and like nothing is piled on the floor because most of the time after i film or even before i film or like during my film it's just chaos and there's just clothes everywhere on the floor yeah let me know if you relate to that oh i'm shaking so much <laughs> people are gonna get so dizzy <laughs> okay so now let's go back to the bedroom <laughs> that sounds scandalous but yeah let's go back to the bedroom where we can start talking Okay, so welcome back to my bedroom. Now that you guys have seen my closet, I'm sorry it wasn't really much of a closet tour. It's actually kind of like a closet peek because yeah, you guys saw it. There's not too much to like walk through in my closet. Let me know if you want to do like a very, very dedicated closet tour on like how I organize my clothes and stuff. Hint, I don't really. So now we're gonna get into the Q&A section. I asked you guys what you wanna know. So a bunch of you left me a bunch of questions on my YouTube community page. So I'm just gonna go through them and pick some to answer. And keep in mind that if you see my previous Girl Talk videos, you know that I'm not like a licensed psychotherapist or something, but I'm always here if you guys need some Karina therapy. First question is how to feel hotter. I think a lot of girls need this, how to feel hotter go to the desert <laughs> oh my god all my dad jokes oh my god it's so funny i'm not even dad i'm a mom though and i just want to follow up with another one because the second most thumbs up question is how to be sexy and hot without revealing clothes so i'm going to be answering those two together first point and i guess the only point i want to bring up about this issue is that you don't need to be wearing revealing clothes in order to feel hot or to feel sexy about yourself. Feeling sexy about yourself is a mindset. I mean, of course, in like mainstream media, we're always seeing, you know, girls or women being portrayed as sexy when they're wearing like less and less clothes. But for me and my interpretation of sexy is when a woman is very confident in herself and her body and her mindset. And she's in control of her life and control of her mind and her thoughts. Because come on, let's face it, if you're not confident in yourself, even if you're wearing like a $10,000 outfit, you're out and about, you're still going to be feeling really self-conscious, so you're still not going to be presenting the best version of yourself outwards. Versus, you know, like you can just wear like a $5 top from Shein, for example, and go out and like totally strut it and like totally work it. That is just my take on how to feel sexy. So yeah, just remember, your attitude and your confidence in life is what makes you sexy and you are wearing the clothes don't make the clothes wear you. Okay, so the second question I wanted to address is by Maddie. Hi, Maddie. How to combat stereotypes while still being a girly girl? I know this is somewhat hard for me as I love all things girly. Same here, girl, same here. But I don't want to be trapped by people's stereotypes of me. This sparked a conversation and many people are saying that people assume that girly girls must be shallow and superficial and maybe even sophisticated gold diggers. And also, another stereotype is that girly girls are not brainy. As a tiny Asian girl in the UK, a lot of men think I am just like an anime girl and they can mess with me. Okay, if you guys watch my videos, you know that I am one of the most girly girls out there. I think a lot of my pieces are very inspired by like what 10 year old me would wear, you know, like floral sundresses and like hats. And are there stereotypes about me? I haven't heard of any, but I bet you they are. And this is very, very common. This is extremely common. And I think it all boils down to confidence. I actually went into detail on how to be more confident in yourself in my very first episode of Girl Talk. So if you want to see more on that, then hop on over and click the link in the description below to check it out. Basically, in a nutshell, I just have three words for you 
You do you. People's way of thinking about you and their stereotypes of you are called stereotypes for a reason. It's because they don't actually know you for who you are. And you, being the goddess that you are, do not need to be concerned about other people's opinions and concerns about you because there will always always be people like that. I don't know if you know, but when people form opinions about you and classify you into certain stereotypes, that just means they're projecting their own insecurities onto you. So keep that in mind. Whenever you think people are saying something about you behind your back or like forming opinions about you, just shut them off, block them out because those negative thoughts belong to them. Okay, so the next one is process on how your body changes when and after you're pregnant and how you managed it. When is it okay for you to start working out on your challenges? So, um, I don't know if you guys all know this, but I have a three-year-old, almost four-year-old boy now. His name is Lucas, and if you follow me on my Instagram stories, you can see him sometimes there. So yeah, I would say that my pregnancy journey has been such a long time ago that I don't actually recall a lot of the stuff that I went through. I know that the first trimester was really hard because I was trying hard to like keep my barf down and not throw up all the time. Um, but then once he hit second trimester, I remember I was feeling like, oh my god, I'm like Energizer Bunny, like my energy's back. I can do whatever I want. Third trimester, not so great. I feel like I couldn't even drink water or like eat a bite of food without feeling like there's no space in my tummy for the food to be in. Um, the birth part was pretty, I mean, I was pretty lucky that I had a really successful and smooth delivery. So everything went well there. And like, to be honest, I feel like I'm gonna like piss a lot of people off by saying this, but I didn't actually work on getting my body back after the delivery because my baby actually had a heart condition that required open heart surgery when he was four months old. So yeah, not a lot of concern and not a lot of priorities were placed on me and my body at that time. If you're interested in that, I made a whole blog post on it too. So make sure you read it if you're interested. How to be energetic and stay motivated. You're always capable of motivating me through the screen with your kind, happy, and fun aura. Thank you. Even when I'm in a bad mood or have a not too perfect day. Um, most of the time I'm pretty happy but trust me I'm not like that all the time. I mean I am a human being and I'm not perfect and I do have my ups and downs just like you would. I feel like what I portray on screen is a pretty accurate representation of what I'm like generally off screen but um, I do feel the pressure to talk more smoothly and to be more relatable on screen i don't know because like off screen i honestly don't talk to a lot of people um especially now given the whole quarantine situation so yeah the only person i talk to is my husband who is my work partner and life partner and there's not a lot of things you can say to your husband after like seven or eight years of marriage believe me um and i talk to my three-year-old toddler which consists a lot of me asking him questions and sometimes stress does consume me and my life and my emotions so yeah I'm trying to work on that but yeah just here to tell you that if you're not having a perfect day or if you're not feeling motivated you're not alone we all go through that as part of being human how do you decide what to wear each day do you pick out outfits at night for the next day or sunday nights for the week or impulsively in the morning love you in your hauls by the way i love you too um i'm impulsive so i never ever plan out my outfits unless unless it's for one of those like lookbooks that I do in my studio where I'm taking clothes off and putting clothes on. Um, I do plan those out ahead of time so I know what pieces go with what. So I'm not just like standing there for like a whole 10 minutes trying to figure out what pairs with that top. But yeah, apart from that, I don't really care about what or when I organize my outfits together. Most of the times when I'm not filming or like appearing in front of a camera, I'm really just in my sweats. Not really sad because it's real life, you know? Advice on starting a YouTube channel. And someone else actually commented more on that and said, how do you balance work, life, hobbies? What are the hardest parts of being a creator on YouTube? Sorry if this is too personal to ask, but do you have multiple streams of income? How did you get to that or manage it now? Thanks, Karina. I love your videos. This is actually one of the most asked, mm, sorry, questions. Oh, oh. And that is how to start a YouTube channel. And my advice to you guys is so simple, okay? It's just get started. You won't know how well you do and you won't know anything about starting a YouTube channel if you just simply don't start. I know a ton of people who are more about planning so they would like to do their research and like plan ahead but then they're so bogged down on focusing on those tasks that they don't actually start. Um, so yeah, the simplest thing to start a YouTube channel is just to start it. 
just create one and just roll with it, film your first video, whatever you're passionate about, and just get started on that. <sighs> Why am I panting so hard? Oh my god. Guys, honestly, film my YouTube video. It's kind of like working out because I don't know why I'm like... <sighs> Heart's beating fast. What are the hardest parts of being a creator on YouTube? So, I would say this, and I think I've answered this question before for my Instagram page because um, before YouTube, I was doing Instagram full time and I did that for about a few years. So I would give you the same advice as I gave my Instagram followers and that is it is going to be a marathon. It's definitely not going to be a sprint. If you're thinking of starting a YouTube channel and you know really being focused on one thing, then recognize that it's going to take a long time. How long it is depends on how viral your videos get. If we all knew how much time it takes for our videos to get viral, if ever, then that would not be the definition of going viral. But in a general nutshell, you probably will have to put out tens of twenties, maybe a hundred videos before your channel starts getting the traction that you hoped it to get. So retrospectively, a lot of the work and the effort that you put into your videos and your YouTube channel would be for nothing, I guess. So yeah, when I first started YouTube, I put out a few videos and then I was very unhappy with the results that it got me and I kind of stopped for a while and then it wasn't until like a few years later that I started picking up YouTube again and this time I really went at it I really tried to put out content consistently you know on a weekly basis sometimes even twice a week and it took me about half a year to almost a year to get to where I am currently so I would say that the first initial first few videos that you do Think of it as kind of like a long-term investment on your channel so it doesn't necessarily bring you a return right away and that you will be feeling like you're putting all that effort and all that time into it for basically nothing. But if you do manage to post consistently, you know, stick to your niche, stick to what you're passionate about, your channel's gonna take off. It's just a matter of time. So yeah, definitely a marathon, not a sprint. Oh yeah, oh my god, I never answered this. Do you have multiple streams of income and how did you get to that? Yes, I do. So I would say that, um, YouTube is one stream, Instagram is another stream. So I would say that the streams of income I get are mostly from YouTube and Instagram and um, also my preset sales on my blog. It's really funny because a few years ago, even just last year, my Instagram income was such such a bigger portion of my overall income versus my YouTube. And now that we're into 2020 or like, you know, even towards the half of last year, my income proportion has completely switched around. Um, that just goes to show there's not a lot of sponsors out there for Instagram now versus last year. A few years ago where I was primarily focused on Instagram, I would be getting a lot of sponsorships from brands and that is primarily how I make my income believe it or not so I'm your typical like IG influencer that makes like not a load of money I wouldn't say I made a lot but it's definitely more than what I was making before and right now 70% of my income is from YouTube and then 30% of my income is from Instagram sponsorships and within the 70% that is concentrated on YouTube a portion of it comes from YouTube Adsense and that is basically when you click on my videos and then you see an ad play and you can choose to skip it or you can choose to not skip it so yeah whether you sit through the entire ad or you know you sit through half of it or you skip it entirely contributes to how much ad revenue i make on that one video and then over time depending on how many videos i put up a month it all adds up into a paycheck at the end of the month so i wouldn't say that is a big chunk either um so Another revenue stream is by YouTube sponsorships. So brands would email me, you know, like brands that you all know, Nasty Gal, Boohoo, to name a few. Um, we would partner together to make videos for you guys. And then I would get a fixed fee from that collaboration. And the third stream of income from YouTube, I would say, is affiliate sales. So when I do list the items that I'm wearing in a link format in the description box below, let's say I'm linking this shirt. This shirt is not affiliated, by the way. So if you click on it and you buy it, you just buy it. I don't get anything from this shirt, but um, some of my Shein pieces and a lot of like other brands that I wear a lot in my videos, if you guys click on the link that I put out, if you then proceed to buy something from this site, let's say you, you spend $10 on Shein, um, I would get 10% of that, so I would get like a dollar from that every time you use my links to get something. Um, so that is called affiliate income and I'm very, very lucky. I have all of you guys supporting me on my videos and my neighbor's kids are going crazy. They're like banging the drums or something. Um, 
Oh my god, okay. Yeah, so contrary to what you might think, using my coupon code like Korean15 on Shein, for example, doesn't actually make me any money. It's when you click on my links and then you proceed to buy something using my link. So yeah, thank you guys so much for all your support towards that, by the way. I really, really appreciate it. Um, the affiliate sales isn't even a giant portion of my YouTube income. So I just wanted to thank you all for like not skipping ads and like using my link to buy items. Do you ever feel pressured to pick one specific aesthetic slash style? I feel like I have five different aesthetics and I cannot choose just one. So thank you Megan for asking that question. You're obviously not alone and I think that it's very very difficult for any girl or anyone out there to have just one specific style that they follow. I mean think about it. You might like something now but like when the seasons change or like if something happens in your life like if you meet new friends who are gonna influence you or you know your style will just change depending on your life changes. And for me this is an issue that I'm struggling with almost daily in my life like believe it or not maybe because a huge part of my job is to create you know fashion related and style content for you guys so I feel the pressure to come up with like 16 billion different types of style ideas for you just so you guys don't get bored of like one um, But that being said, I do realize that the majority of my content has been focused on more girlier fashion So I am trying so hard What is this? <laughs> to feature a wider range of styles and looks, you know, including like jeans. I know a lot of you want me to stop wearing heels. <laughs> Even though I personally think that, you know, it looks better on the legs, visually elongates your legs ratio, but I do realize that it's not very wearable in real life. And I know that for me, because um, fashion plays a huge part in how I express my own creativity, um, sometimes I'm just feeling different. So a, a huge part of my style and my fashion sense actually comes from how I'm feeling that day. So it's very emotionally tied. That makes sense. So yeah, I guess you can say that I feel very girly <laughs> most of the time. <laughs> but yeah, I'm trying to do more like neutral, like looks. You know what I mean? Hey guys, thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of Girl Talk. I know that I still owe you guys a bunch of other talks um feel free to leave me a comment on this video down below on what questions you want me to answer next um it can be anything it can be about boys it can be about relationships it can be about you know like style and fashion and like anything money how to save how to do anything in life <laughs> I may not have the right answers, but I can give you some of my opinions and some of Karina's therapy. I will see you in my next video. I love you all. Bye bye. 